This is Hans-Peter Kneip, Executive Director at Deutsche Euroshop. I'm very much, look, much looking forward to this call after uh, unfortunately not being able to make the last one in March due to illness. Thankfully, Patrick, who is with me today, took over this call in his usually experienced manner and guided you through our annual results for 2022. Now that we have gone through most of 2023, let's take a glance at the nine-month figures and the developments in the company together. Clearly, our team's constant hard work is reflected in our nine months 2023 financial results, and I'm happy to take you through them and address any questions you may have. Let's dive into our performance and future prospects. Thank you for your time, and let's get started. You can find an update on our business activities on slides two and three. Compared to the first nine months of 2022, we have seen an encouraging increase in footfall of 11% and 7.4% in the retail sales of our tenants. As a result, our tenants are generating sales that are higher than in the pre-COVID period. It is probably the last time we compare with pre-COVID era as that comparison seems less and less appropriate. Shopping and the corresponding environment have evolved in the meantime, and we are well advised to now focus on future opportunities. Our revenues went up by 28.1% to 203.2 million euros, and FFO increased by 34.5% to now 129.7 million euros. In terms of financing, we are in a very good position with an LTV of 32.4%, and a cash position of 280.6 million euros. We have a steady funding situation and all our financings for this year are completed. Our next loan is only due in 2025 with major financing only coming up from 2026 on. As you know, we have paid out a dividend of 191.2 million euros in September. On slide four, we have a closer look into our centers. In Q3, footfall went up by 0.7% and the turnover of our tenants by 4.3% compared to the prior year period. As already mentioned, looking on the first nine months of this year, we have seen a plus of 7.4% in footfall and 11% in turnover, as shown in the yellow bar chart. Consumption continues to be impacted by the effects of inflation and the war in the Ukraine. And the problematic conflict in the Middle East has certainly burdened the mood in the recent weeks. Nevertheless, we are optimistic about the Christmas business, which will soon be entering its peak phase. Before I come to the financial results of the first nine months, I would like to remind you that we acquired additional shares in six of our shopping centers early in January. These acquisitions were financed through a capital increase against cash and non-cash contributions. As a result of the acquisition of additional shares, four property companies previously accounted for using the equity method were fully included in the consolidated financial statements for the first time with economic effect from 1st of January, 2023. When describing the results of operations, financial position and net assets of the group, I will provide this information on the basis of a comparable group, i.e. pro forma. The comparable group was prepared under the assumption that the acquisition of the six property companies had already taken place at the beginning of 2022. We have highlighted the effect in red for the 2022 figures on the following pages. So now let's start with the revenues on slide five. These came out slightly higher at 203.2 million euros after 197.5 million euros in the first nine months of 2022. This is a pro forma plus of 2.9%, which essentially comes from index adjustments and higher turnover rents. The breakdown between Germany and abroad has shifted slightly in favor of foreign countries, where we now have a 20% share. On slide six, you see that the EBT adjusted for the valuation increased from 109.1 million euros to 135.4 million euros, which is a pro forma plus of 24.1% due to income from reversal of provisions 
for ancillary costs and maintenance, as well as lower value adjustments and consultancy expenses. Another positive impact came from the interest income with plus 3.7 million euros. Please follow me now to page 7 and to the development of the FFO. The FFO pro forma increased from 111 million euros to now 129.7 million euros, or on a per share basis, from 1 euro 49 to 1 euro 74, due to higher operating results. I'm now coming to the balance sheet on page 8, where we naturally also see the effects of the acquisitions. Our total assets amount to 4.6 billion euros. This is a change of 344.1 million euros compared with the reporting date end of 2022. Our consolidated liquidity as of 30th September 2023 stands at 280.6 million euros, that is a minus of 54.4 million euros. Please keep in mind that we paid out a dividend of 191.2 million euros in September. Total equity, including minorities, increased by 170.5 million euros. As at 30th September 2023, current and non-current financial abilities stood at 1.63 billion euros, which was 151.3 million euros higher than at the end of 2022. In particular, due to the liabilities from the minority acquisitions. Non-current deferred tax liabilities increased by 5.9 million euros to 340.3 million euros. Our equity ratio decreased slightly, but still stands at a very solid 55.2%, and the consolidated LTV now stands at a low 32.4%. The APRA LTV calculated proportionally according to the group share in all assets, so to say on a look-through basis, stands at 34.1%, a continued very low level. On page 9, we give you some information on our debt. There are no expiring loans this nor next year. Currently, our consolidated debt bears an average interest rate of 2.34%. The weighted maturity of our loan portfolio now stands at six years. Coming to some news on our portfolio, on slide 10. As you know, we published new investment plans for the Main-Taunus Zentrum, one of the largest and highest turnover shopping centers in Germany and among the jewels in our portfolio. A new highlight is to be added to the MTZ, giving it a new lively and urban center with a high quality, varied restaurant and food offering. New freestanding restaurant buildings are to be built until 2024, some with roof terraces some with outdoor terraces, attractive landscaped exterior areas, and sophisticated architecture. The new food garden will be built on an area of around 7,000 square meters in the heart of the shopping center in place of a former department store building. The corresponding investment is around 28 million euros. Construction work has started, and I'm very happy to tell you that we are already almost completely pre-let with high-quality tenants. The grand opening is planned for spring 2022, uh, 2025. Excuse me. There are also good news from Fiernheim, where the rhein neckar Centrum is located. You will see those on slide 11. From next February on, a new and modern freestanding Losteria will provide culinary highlights from Italian cuisine. In addition, three exciting tenants will move into the completely renovated former Bauhaus building in the middle of the year providing plenty of retail retailtainment, as we say. An interactive indoor entertainment concept, a trampoline park, and a successful cycling store will each be an attraction. Already opened and only a few meters away is the indoor skydiving center, which has started very promisingly. All these tenants will positively benefit from each other and give the entire center a further boost. On slide 12, we want to show you that we play an active role in promoting the settlement of promising new tenants to constantly adapt and enrich our portfolio. Here's just one example. In the last few months, European retailer Pepco has moved into various spaces left vacant from an insolvent shoe retail chain. 
PEPCO offers a wide range of clothing, household goods, and decorative items for the whole family at very competitive prices. Corresponding to the current demand, and providing even more variety to our shopping centers. This shows once more our constant commitment to continuously increase the attractiveness of our centers. Finally, I would like to come to slide 13 and the outlook. With 2023 as the first year without COVID-related restrictions, we expected and meanwhile see a continued improvement of the operational business. We will further strengthen our competitive position with forward-looking investments in our shopping centers. ESG investments are naturally becoming increasingly important and a strategic focus. Furthermore, we plan a focused optimization and diversification of our financing structure, depending, of course, on the further market and financing environment. After raising our forecast for 2023 in August, and posting business performance in line with expectations in the third quarter, we are confirming our forecast for funds from operations of 2 euro 8 to 2 euro 18 per share for the full year 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, we remain optimistic in the face of changing markets and habits, which also present us with unprecedented opportunities. Our company is well prepared and we welcome our participation in this endeavor. So far, my presentation. Thank you for listening. I'm happy to take your questions now. Sandra, please take over. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we will begin the question and answer session. Our first question comes from Andre Remke from Baderbank. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sirs. Um, a couple of questions from my side. First, thank you for the presentation. Um, uh, the first question is on your vacancy. Um, what is current vacancy and do you face any changes here to date or in the third quarter? And what are your expectations regarding uh, can see going forward? This is the first question, please. Thanks, Andre, for, um, uh, for, for this question. Um, as you know, we have um, posted quite uh, stable vacancy um, uh, figures in the past and, um, uh, you know, we'll come up uh, uh, with uh, uh, new figures um, uh, towards our, our, our annual figures. Uh, so far, the, the portfolio in the, has been very stable and very robust um, in terms of, of vacancy. Um, we are just hovering around uh, five to six, uh, six percent overall, um, and we currently estimate um, that this uh, will remain stable. Um, of course, you know, and you've, uh, there have been a few uh, examples also in the in the presentation that we are in um, construction works in some of our centers. So part of the vacancy um, of those five six percent uh, we've posted over over the last few quarters are also due um, uh, to uh, concrete measures we are taking on in our portfolio but overall you can assume that vacancy will remain on a stable basis um, could you be a bit more precise what part of, of uh, the five to six percent is uh, due to the construction or new development well, you know that that historically, um, uh, uh, you, you followed Deutsche Euro for for a while. Um, uh, the long term um, uh, vacancy has always been around two to three percent. So now um, you see um, uh, a higher um, a vacancy of, of of five to six percent. Um, and of course, um, there's a part of this is uh, is due to to overall. Um, sector shift, maybe uh, maybe half of, uh, of this change, so may, maybe that were there one or two percent may just be due to a, to a changed market and environment, and another, another one to two percent is due to the fact um, that we are constantly working and developing um, our portfolio. So that's how I would uh, would put it. Perfect. Thank you. Um, then looking to your FFO guidance, you already reached more than 80% after nine months of the FFO guidance. Uh, do you expect a quite weaker fourth quarter? Uh, and if so, what are the main drivers for that? Yeah, so in, indeed we have uh, reached over 80% um, um, of uh, um, the FFO guidance we have, uh, we have posted for, for the year. Um, uh, as you know, um, seasonality um, plays a role, um, especially 
um, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, construction work, maintenance uh, work. So there may be um, some of the costs uh, which may be a bit higher towards the end of the year. So um, there's no, um, we don't see any um, any lagging in terms of our operational business, uh, but more um, uh, a little bit um, higher on the cost side. Um, so that's certainly the main impact we're, we're seeing here. But of course, you are right in assuming um, uh, that uh, we are uh, optimistic that we may reach the upper end of the, of the guidance. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, brings me to another question. In former times, you provided the guidance for the upcoming year quite early. Um, so now it seems that you will only provide guidance for, for next year and spring next year. Uh, how, how could I read this? Is the visibility simply lower nowadays? Or um, And um, I'm not asking for a concrete figure for next year, but what are the main drivers for FFO next year? Yeah. Um, uh, to, 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 be, to be transparent, um, the, the operational business as such um, uh, has not really changed compared to, to, to the former time. So um, there you still see um, uh, ongoing um, high stability, especially um, uh, looking at our numbers, you see that uh, in, in most of the parameters we are back um, uh, to, to, to pre-COVID levels. Uh, so the, 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 the business as such um, uh, is stable as it used to be, with maybe the, the exception that, of course, um, we're still in a phase uh, where um, uh, market movements and movements with our retailers are, are quite, quite significant. So that's, uh, that's certainly one aspect, but overall the operating business um, is, um, uh, is stable. Um, what we are, of course, doing, um, um, and uh, I mentioned this on, on, on further occasions, that uh, we are um, uh, reviewing our portfolio strategically of what we can, and, and also from a financial side, um, uh, you know that we are looking at our financing and capital structure, which may have some impact on a, on a potential guidance. Um, so therefore, that's the, uh, I would say, the, 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 the the real reason on, on why uh, we are uh, giving out guidance uh, um, later than, than maybe in the past, um, as we are looking both on our portfolio and financing side um, uh, with a little more, uh, more flexibility and open-mindedness. Um, uh, and uh, this uh, is for us the, um, the main reason. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you mentioned to be optimistic on the Christmas business. What I heard from the retail associations uh, for this year's retail, uh, Christmas business, uh, they are less optimistic. At least this was my impression. What makes you more optimistic? Is it, does it relate to your uh, specific tenant structure or, or what is the reason for that? Yeah, two two points on this. Um, uh, um, you remember we had exactly this uh, this discussion one year ago, uh, um, and there was quite quite substantial pessimism last year on the Christmas business um, and also the this Black Week, Black Friday, um, um, and it turned out it, that it was much better than uh, than expected. Um, we had been optimistic already already last year on this, and we still still are um, uh, are this year. Uh, we know that uh, that um, uh, some some estimates, uh, also from other research associations, are always very cautious um, when they look at the at the Christmas business in Germany. Uh, but uh, uh, at least last year, uh, we were proven right in being uh, optimistic, um, and we think the the situation compared to last year um, hasn't really really changed. Um, so of course there are still headwinds. We all know that, um, and there are good reasons um, uh, for consumers to still be hesitant regarding their spending. Um, inflation is still um, a big topic, um, but uh, we also see positive effects. Um, infl inflation has reduced, um, especially on the on the energy side. I think there is more transparency and more uh, more clarity on what will happen. Um, so there are also positive signs which may uh, may um, impact. Um, uh, consumer spending in a good way. And, and then, of course, uh, the second um, uh, aspect is that I think um, the the structure of our portfolios and the, the retailers we have in our portfolio 
um, uh, do represent usually a, a very good fit um, uh, within within this region where they are region where they are they are placed in. Um, uh, there's no uh, secret about, and you may also refer to those numbers that, that many research associations say, okay, that um, Christmas business uh, Germans intend to spend less overall um, on, uh, on, on Christmas presents. Um, but for example, with the settlement of, of, of Pepco and other more competitive price um, uh, retailers, that's exactly what, uh, uh, what um, consumers are looking for at the moment, uh, and those are posting uh, very strong, uh, strong results. Um, uh, you may have seen that in the in the press that uh, if uh, you have the right retailers in your portfolio, you have can achieve a very, uh, very strong outcome. So therefore, yes, we are uh, optimistic on the on the Christmas season, um, and of course, is always happy to catch afterwards if we uh, uh, we were right this time as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and the last question uh, on your portfolio valuation, what are your expectations at year end? Any indications you already have received from appraisers or, or from, from market transactions? What is your view on that? Yeah, no, no indication really yet on, um, on the valuation. Uh, however, what we see is that um, the transaction market for retail and shopping centers uh, seems to pick up, but it's still too, a little bit too early for um, um, uh, to, to to read this because so there have been um, a low number of shopping centers that are uh, either put on the market or is there some some price sounding exercises going on, uh, and of course our valuer is currently quite actively investigating on. Um, uh, on what the price expectations may be. In the end, um, you know that uh, that valuers will have to look at concrete transaction pricings. Uh, there, unfortunately, there's not more evidence uh, compared uh, compared to um, to the previous um, um, nine nine months. So there are not there's still not um, a notable number. Of, of transaction, especially comparable to our portfolio. So it may be a little bit too early, but um, um, uh, there are uh, further trans uh, transactions or at least um, uh, processes coming up, which will certainly provide a cross-read for also for our portfolio over the next uh, the next uh, few months. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much, and Peter, um, and good Christmas business. Thanks, Andrew. The next question comes from Andrea Plezier from Barbuk Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Kneipp. Uh, hello, Patrick. Uh, I have two questions left after the topics ever own valuation we already have touched. Firstly, uh, on footfall, uh, we have a lower growth momentum uh, in Q3 of only 0.7. Um, when you compare this level with 2019, uh, where are we now? Uh, because you mentioned already that you are in terms of sales of your uh, tenants, you are already above 2019. Uh, That's the first question. Mm -hmm. And second one is in terms of write downs on receivables. Um, what do you expect here a level uh, in the coming years? We have still see uh, insolvencies and uh, we have in 2019 a level of 8 million. For this year probably the same figure. Is this a run rate probably uh, for the next years? Thanks, uh, Andreas, for, for, for the two questions. Um, um, yes, indeed, so we have, um, uh, we have posted um, uh, very positive footfall um, growth over 20, 2022. Um, and also we have, um, have published that we are um, uh, clearly above in terms of uh, revenues. Um, um, but but not in terms of footfall. So on footfall, of course, it depends a little bit on the um, on the centers we are looking at. But overall, uh, there we are still a, a little bit behind 2019 uh, 19 numbers. Um, um, so um, or, or roughly roughly flat, I, I would uh, um, I would say. But uh, the I think the point to take away is that there. The uptick is clearly on the um, uh, on the revenue of our um, uh, of our tenants, uh, and less uh, um, 
in terms of the footfall. Um, so this, for, from our perspective, of course, you can never reach uh, customers' uh, minds exactly. There's uh, there's two effects which uh, which can be uh, read out of this. Um, the first one is, of course, there is inflation, uh, no doubt about this. So those numbers. Um, uh, mm -hmm. of turnover uh, are nominal, so this may be one explanation on why relatively um, uh, turnover is higher compared um, uh, to to the footfall, which is just the 2019 numbers. Um, uh, and the other sure. explanation may be um, that uh, um, customers uh, are coming less, but then um, in a more in a more focused way. Uh, so most likely, reality is somewhere in between. Um, but uh, bottom line is that uh, um, uh, in terms of uh, footfall, also night growth, um, but uh, roughly uh, around 2019 levels, and not significantly above as the as the turnover numbers. Um, I know that's a little bit a longer answer compared to your uh, rather short questions, but uh, we always believe that footfall and uh, revenues have to be seen in conjunctions to to see the real real picture. Okay. Um, regarding um, your second question, so further projection um, write down of, um, of receivables. Um, so you know that we are still um, in uh, kind of a tra transition year, more on the positive side, because um, of course um, many round write downs of the receivables we had in the past, in the end we we didn't need. So um, uh, uh, you see. Um, uh, strong uptick in uh, in other uh, operating income from 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 the release of this or reversal of those um, those write downs. Um, so therefore, I um, wouldn't take the, this uh, this number that you see now um, as the new run rate. So for for the new run rate, um, we have we don't publish this figure anymore because it's it's very very stable. We have a collection rate of rents uh, of 99% um, roughly. So there's um, um, very few write downs uh, that uh, um, that are needed. Thus, therefore, as a, as a more stable um, assumptions assumption, we calculate uh, uh, with roughly uh, two percent of the uh, of the revenues uh, as an as our internal guidance, um, as we don't expect um, that uh, uh, this, those insolvencies that you mentioned in your questions uh, will continue uh, from from there. It may not be the the last ones which we have seen. Um, but um, the worst is over. We have our just adjusted our portfolio uh, in a sustainable way. Um, uh, we have discussed the vacancy, uh, which is uh, which is quite low in the port, uh, portfolio, adjusted for construction. So therefore, uh, we are optimistic that those two percent um, uh, write down um, cushion will be enough going going forward. Therefore, that's something also you could could take into account. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Andreas. As a reminder, if you wish to register for a question, please press star followed by one. The next question comes from Martin Manuel from Odo. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, thank you uh, for taking my questions. Uh, two questions from my side. Um, the the first one, maybe one by one. Um, the first one is on on rent. Um, could you give us some some indications or flavor on your rent renewables? Um, so, are you experiencing lower rent levels uh, when you uh, make a new contract, or what's what's the trend there? Maybe to the upside. Yeah, um, very good question. Because um, um, as you know, the um, uh, there have been. Um, been quite significant changes also in the past. Um, um, uh, we have um, it's, it's a quite varied picture. So you see that overall um, um, uh, we have uh, posted a positive revenue um, uh, figures figures going forward, um, uh, and uh, um, uh, you know that this is uh, um, this is due mainly to from from index exa indexations. Um, and, um, and and turnover rents, but those are of course uh, predominantly um, uh, old contracts. And in terms of the new count contracts, um, certainly we see, um, depending on the strength of the centre, um, some some contraction in in the rents, also um, um, lower rents. Um, but also given um, depending on the on the shopping centre, uh, significantly higher rents. So it's a it's a quite diverse. Uh, mix uh, depending on the center where you where where you're in. Uh, so to to just just give you an example, if we are 
in our uh, strong centers, which have a very strong competitive position um, and no uh, no vacancy. Um, of course, we have much more room for for negotiation. Um, uh, therefore, for those new tenants, uh, for example, in the Maintanus Centrum or the Altmark Galerie in Dresden or Galeria Baltica, uh, which are all, all fully let, we have a strong bargaining power, and therefore. Uh, here we don't really see um, um, lower rents, but more um, um, stable uh, or sometimes even uh, even higher rents. For example, if you look at the, uh, at the food garden project in, in the Montana Center, of course we have uh, we have higher rents, but also there is uh, there is capex capex against it. Um, in uh, in locations which are uh, which are I would say more positive to to, to average. Um, of course, um, uh, we have also um, had some concessions in terms of rents. Um, um, you know that uh, this year and also the previous year was not an easy one in terms of uh, insolvencies um, uh, in Germany and uh, across our portfolio. Um, and there, our priority was always um, uh, to have um, uh, the shopping center um, occupied um, and um, uh, and to 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 manage vacancy in first place, then in order to target the maximum rent. I know there are other um, strategies and uh, and tactics in the market, but that's the way um, uh, our our company uh, functions. So in the end, um, it, it comes comes down to the question on um, uh, what is sustainable, and uh, we see in most of our portfolio. Um, uh, occupancy rate cost ratios, um, i.e., um, um, rent to 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 turnover of our of our customers, which is very sustainable. So we don't expect that from here um, um, it, uh, rents will have to be reduced significantly. But there's still some adjustments to um, um, to be made. So um, um, overall, as of now, I would say rather slightly negative impact from. Uh, from new um, uh, relettings across across the portfolio, but also here a stabilizing trend. Mm. Okay. Um, and um, second question would be on uh, on the MTZ in Frankfurt. Um, so um, <clears throat> according to the presentation, there's a 28 million euro total investment. Um, can can you indicate how much have been spent so far for for the food garden there, and what is uh, the um, the rate of return that you expect uh, for for this uh, investment, more or less? Yeah. Um, so on the on the empty set, um, uh, we announced that we have just started construction work. So um, there is um, uh, the the amount that has been currently spent on the empty set is below five million. So that's. Uh, um, you know all the uh, the planning and uh, run-up costs, so that has been been spent already. But construction uh, has only started um, uh, in in October, so uh, the most uh, capex um, um, is still to come on this uh, on this project. Um, and uh, in terms of yield um, um, expectations. Um, um, uh, we are in an in an in a range um, of roughly five and a half to to six percent for uh, for the project, which for the asset um, uh, uh, MTZ um, um, is is a good a good figure. Um, and of course, um, that's also something um, uh, you have to take in mind. Twenty eight million. That's uh, uh, that's the total investment for the entire project. Um, you know that the. Um, my Taunus Centrum um, uh, is uh, jointly held. We have a controlling um, stake of 52%. Uh, of it's jointly held uh, together um, with a, uh, an, an investment fund. So the, uh, our proportion would just be roughly half of it. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. Thanks, Manuel. Gentlemen, so far there are no more questions on the phone. I hand back to you for closing comments. Thanks very much for uh, for listening to the call and also for your uh, um, for your questions. Uh, very much appreciated uh, that uh, uh, you continue to follow Deutsche Euro so uh, so, so so closely. So thanks uh, thanks for your time uh, and looking forward uh, to our next call together. Thank you.